This is the Zip R panel I was talking about, and it's really cool stuff. You can see I've sheeted the whole outside of my house. Well, not the whole outside. Only the parts where I've stripped the siding. I couldn't afford to do the whole house at once, so next year, or maybe the year after when I've got the money, I'm going to pull the siding off the rest of the house, take out the windows and replace them, and continue this R panel around the whole house. I like this stuff. I like it because it has a layer of half inch foam on the back of it, and that provides a thermal break between the framing of the wall, whether it's studs, whether it's the face of the stud that you're applying the sheathing to, or in this case, there's already subsheathing on this house. Not only do you get a good thermal break from the R panel, but this is part of the zip wall system. The, the green color you see on here is actually a waterproof membrane that's embedded on the material during the manufacture of the panel. And the cool thing about it is when you attach your windows and you flash on top of this, you'll be using using the flashing tape like we will on this window and it'll adhere molecularly right to the face of this membrane so you get a solid solid seal that you can count on. The other advantage to the zip system is unlike plastic house wrap when you install your siding like in plastic house wrap you install your siding you're penetrating the plastic house wrap with hundreds and hundreds of nails and each one of those nail holes is a potential leak an air leak and possibly a moisture leak too. With the zip system, you don't get that kind of problem because when you drive your siding nails through this, the siding nails seal, they're going through you know, a half inch or so of OSB, so the siding nails seal and you don't get air infiltration, and so you'll be able to seal the house better. And this is really important because more and more municipalities, more and more states and cities are requiring things like blower door testing to be sure that the envelope of a home is sealed completely against air infiltration. That's becoming more of an issue in the country as we, as we seek more and more stringent insulation codes. So the zip system is a really great way to go and that's why I'm using it on my house. All right. So I've run a bead of sealant all the way around the whole window fin now, the nailing fin, and I'm ready to install this side light. Great, that'll do. I just want to put one fastener in this thing for now. There's some adjustments I've got to make. I want to be able to slide this unit around and match the reveal between these two jams when I set this last window in so that the reveal between these two jams matches the reveal between the next two jams. We've got them all three in and these two, the two side lights are just tacked so I can move them around still. But I've got four and a quarter here between the two jams and up at the top here, I got four and, oh, four and five sixteenths. That's pretty close to four and a quarter, but let's check and make sure these things are plumb before I do any final adjustments. That leg's definitely plumb. That's the one we set yesterday. And this one's right on plumb too. So I can go ahead and fasten these off permanently. I could joggy this one over. I could jog this one over just a tiny bit, but it's not really worth it for a sixteenth of an inch. Let's check this other one though. Before I put any more fasteners in that one, I gotta check this one. And this one's four and a quarter down at the bottom. Perfectly. Because you never know, you know? You might have to move this one in to match this one because you might not have enough room to move this one out or something. So check them all before you put any fasteners in. I got four and a quarter at the top of this too. And let's check it for plum. Excellent, right on. So I can fasten all these off and finish this thing. So I start applying the zip tape at the top and just pull a section of it down but I want to be really careful to get it to lap onto the side of the window and cover that little kerf where the nailing fin fits into the jam of the window and that way this adhesive flashing can waterproof that kerf as well so I'll work my way all the way down each time making sure that I get it lapped right onto the window, just like so. And 
And it doesn't matter how much I lap. I mean, I could lap it as much as three quarters of an inch if I wanted to, because the trim will cover it. There we go. And then just like the other adhesive flashing, we'll go over this with the J-roller. And you can see how the texture on this roller, it's really got a really deep texture on it here, just pushes that tape right against the membrane on the Z panel, on the zip panel. Now on this side of the window, this is where you run into typical problems on a remodel. I've got the old siding right here, and somehow or other I gotta waterproof this wall, at least temporarily for the next year or two. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put one layer of zip tape on here, and then wait until I bring the trim over. I'll bring a piece of trim over, I'll scribe the siding and cut it again, and then before I install the trim, I'll take another layer of zip tape, add on to this one, and tape right to the edge of the framing right behind this siding before I put the trim on. So the last piece goes right across the head and even though this is a self-adhesive flashing we want to do this shingle style. That's why the piece goes on the head last so any moisture that gets in behind the siding will drain down the zip wall right over the top of this flashing and shingle style right over the previous piece of flashing. So I'll run this right across the top just like I did the walls and push the flashing down against the jam of the window and then run my fingers up the wall to flatten it. So now I got a nice seal against the upper jam of the window too. And that finishes off the whole flashing system around the window and it's time to move to the inside and seal up the inside of the jams. So there's one more step in the sealing process and that's to spray expansive foam all the way around the jam between the, king, between the trimmer or the jack stud if you're on the east coast and the back of the window jam so we can seal that cavity. And this expansive foam is great stuff. This is tech foam. It's also made by OSI and I'm using their foam gun. You just thread the can right into the gun and the beautiful part about this is the gun has a ball has a little ball valve right in the tip so the material that's inside the tip here never solidifies it doesn't cure you can continue to use this you can use it one week pick it up again a month later and it'll still operate you can still spray foam out of it even if it's been sitting for a few weeks that means you'll be able to use all the foam in the whole can you won't have to throw away a bunch of you know a, a can with a bunch of foam left in it like you do sometimes when you buy those inexpensive cans with the little straws in them so this is a cool tool to use but before I can spray this foam I got to make sure this unit's in here perfectly I want to go inside I'm going to check the way the door operates, make sure I adjust the hinges and any last minute shims behind the jams and the windows too before I take that expansive foam and run it around the jam because after that it won't move at all. Now, Milgard gives you quite a few really cool things when you're installing their windows and these are Milgard Essence, part of their Essence line of windows and doors. There's a kind of a new line they've got. It's solid fiberglass. The finish on here is all factory applied as part of the fiberglass so it's not going to wear, it's not going to fade or anything. And 
And since it's fiberglass, there are hollow ports inside of the hollow cells inside of the windows and the doors. So there's no there's no kind of thermal transmission from cold air to the outside from the outside to the inside or hot air from the outside to the inside. It's a very nice unit. The doors even have a multi-point lock on them. I've, I've been using these for a while and just love them. But I also love the package they ship you with the doors. You notice how I had to make my own like sill in here, my own sill pan. Well, you can use the sill pan that Milgard provides you with every one of these units and it's adjustable. You just glue it together and you can adjust it for different sizes. Not only that, but the profile of the pan here has kind of a pitch to it in some areas. Like right in here, it drains out and here's a flat spot. And then here's an area where it drains out and then another flat spot. So it's the same concept that I was using when I put my sill pan in and I used that cant strip to make sure the moisture would come out. It's exactly the same concept. I couldn't use it in this application because I had to get this sill nosing in here so it would lap over the top of my ledger. Remember, this whole problematic opening here is caused by the ledger height. I had to bring the ledger up all the way to the bottom of the sill nosing just so I could find something to attach that ledger to because there is nothing down lower to bolt that ledger to. So this isn't all that Milgard gives you. Milgard also gives you a little package of fasteners, all of the screws and plugs that you need to finish this unit up. This is one of the Allen wrenches you use for adjusting the hinges. I'll show you that in a second. But these are some of the long fastening screws they provide and they fit right inside the holes that are pre-drilled in the sides of the jam. So you, this is the final step in the installation process. You install these long screws and then they give you a colored cap and the cap will cover that little hole that hides that screw. It's just a beautiful system. Milgard supplies some really cool hinges like this for these on these doors. They're all adjustable. I've got the wrench up inside of the center hinge here. If you want to raise the door, always take the center hinge first and lift it. And that'll take the weight off the two other hinges. Then go ahead and raise the upper hinge and the lower hinge to match the center hinge. You'll even find marks on the inside leaves of the hinges so you can actually line them all up so that they all are in exactly the right position so that the weight of the door is distributed evenly on all three hinges. That's the way you adjust the door vertically. Now let's look at how you adjust the door horizontally. Do this especially carefully. You can back the screw out and move the door away from the, hat, from the jam or you can tighten the screw up and move the door toward the jam. So you'll be moving the door horizontally. And you want to do this carefully. If you back that screw out too many turns, more than two turns, the screw will come right out of the hole. You'll have to pull the whole leaf off the door to pick it up and put it back in again. Whatever you do, don't use a screw gun, let alone an impact driver, to try and adjust these screws. They're really sensitive. And you want to do this symmetrically. Let's say you have to tighten the top hinge a full turn. And to adjust the door at the bottom of the jam, you need to tighten the bottom of the, the bottom hinge, let's say, a half a turn. Then be sure to tighten up the center hinge about a quarter turn so you have an even amount of pressure on all three hinges. OSI also makes this really nifty little copper tubing extension. You just thread it onto the gun right here. Now the copper tubing allows you to get into these really tight little spaces like I did right here, but it also has to be cleaned. It doesn't have a ball valve in the tip of it like the gun does. So when you're through using it, unthread it and take OSI's Tech Clean and spray this thing out so it's nice and clean. You'll be able to use it the next time. Ah, perfect. 
I'll come back later to do the jam extensions.